Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. An Israeli regulator warns of medical cannabis bubble and eyes a pact with Australia. Medical cannabis could become an investment bubble in Israel, the country's market regulator warned, as cash floods into the rapidly expanding industry where few companies yet make money. A special unit has been formed by the Israel Securities Authority to ensure that investors are protected and not being misled. The agency's chair said that Israel may expand its dual listing arrangements to include Australia as its ties to connect with more foreign markets and draw investors to recover trading volumes lost a decade ago. One of the fastest growing segments on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange is medical cannabis and the sector got a boost in January when the government approved exports. About 26 companies listed have a link to medical cannabis up from 19 in December with a combined market value of 3.4 billion shekels or about 952 million US dollars. Most are at the early stage without revenues, which is frightening, but some shares are up hundreds of percent since the start of 2018. The agency's chair said that they don't think that they can avoid a bubble, but bubbles are part of the nature of markets and that they can provide their insight to the right tools for managing those types of risks. Cannabis stocks may be high, but overall trade volumes are sluggish and have recouped the flows lost when they upgraded Israel to a developed market status from emerging in 2010. Tel Aviv share volumes averaged 1.1 billion shekels a day between January and April, down almost 20% from last year's average and half the levels of a decade ago. To help lure new investors, they forged a dual listing partnership with new markets in New York, Toronto, London, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Already about 20 Israeli companies are listed in Australia and Australian groups own about 10% of the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. Israel was one of the first countries to early on invest in medical marijuana and research. Uh, So it's no surprise that they're jumping on board after Canada to try and bring in some of that institutional money. Clearly their stock exchange is dipping and research is becoming more global. And this just seems like a low hanging fruit for them to pull in some more revenue and investment opportunities. You'll never guess who's betting against Canadian cannabis stocks. Cureleaf Holdings is the largest multi-state operator focused on tightly regulated cannabis markets along the East Coast. And Cureleaf's executive chairman, Boris Jordan, also runs Measure 8, a venture fund that recently stirred up some controversy with the questionable acquisition. In the near future, Measure 8 wants to launch a hedge fund that'll bet on U.S. marijuana stocks and against Canadian cannabis producers at the same time. But here's some reasons that the strategy might make sense and some reasons that it won't. The sales explosion that adult use cannabis legalization was supposed to ignite is a dud. According to Statistics Canada, inventories rose in February compared with January while sales declined, and it's not hard to see why. Health Canada insists on putting public safety ahead of the industry's needs. Plain packaging rules will make it extremely difficult to build a recognizable brand, and Health Canada also intends to limit the amount of THC that can go into edibles and beverages to a low level to affect around 6% of the country that uses cannabis daily. Perhaps the biggest reason to bet against Canadian producers is the oncoming glut of licensed cannabis. The 10 largest cannabis producers could soon be able to produce 3.3 million kilograms annually, and there are over 100 smaller producers flooding an overall market that wasn't exactly starved for cannabis in the first place. If we annualize total sales from the first two months of 2019, it looks like Canada will only need around 540,000 kilograms of licensed cannabis this year. If this figure doesn't start raising again, Aurora Cannabis will soon be able to supply the entire Canadian market for licensed marijuana while running at half capacity. Cannabis growth will soon be able to grow enough licensed cannabis to supply the entire country as well, but it's unlikely to see a great deal of sales growth while sharing the Canadian market with Aurora and dozens of small producers. Even though Canopy and Aurora are losing money now, their combined market value at the moment is a stunning $24.7 billion. Once more investors realize how difficult it would be for these businesses to simply break even, their stock prices will tank. And on the flip side, in the U.S., annual legal marijuana sales climbed to $10.4 billion in 2018, and there's still plenty of room to grow. In 2017, annual demand for recreational cannabis, state legal or otherwise, was estimated at $50 billion. Some companies selling cannabis in the U.S. are actually making money. For example, Florida-based True Leave Cannabis reported $75 million operating profit last year. During the same period, Aurora's operations lost $60 million and canopy growth lost a stunning $339 million. While there are no limits to a short seller suffering when stocks rise unexpectedly, Canopy Growth, Aurora Cannabis, and many other giant Canadian peers will never run all of their greenhouses at full capacity, but markets can behave irrationally a lot longer than you might remain solvent. 
And with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out.